leader. Please consult your municipality website for your zip codes to mark your location. Reminder, you have 14 hours and minutes to evaluate Earth. Please consult your municipality website for your zip codes to mark your location. That's a pretty nice space. Take two. Okay. Oh, Take two. Thanks. Okay. And there you go. Reese's Pieces, my favorite. Trip? And where are you? Trip? Yes. Okay. A cowboy alien. And you are the spaceship. Get out of town. Oh, no. You did not like that. Oh, boy. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, here you go. Take as much as you want. Oh, okay. Oh, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know that you just permanently scarred that kid. Oh, you can't win them all. He's never going to ask trick or treat again. Well, at least I'm not the one enforcing the literal take two rule on these kids last day on Earth. Hey, I'm just trying to enforce a normalcy. The take two rule is like a staple. <laughs> What are you, anyways? <laughs> You're a kid. No. <laughs> Seriously. Ghost face? From Scream? Uh, I never saw those. Oh my god. Maybe like once at a sleepover. Hello, Sidney! I was supposed to be You hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a wow, fish! Wow, that's... that's... I'm dressed as a dog. <laughs> no way. Yep. Are you like any dog in particular? Um, I don't really know. I Lassie? Just, yeah, no. <laughs> Pluto? Nope, I just... An earbud. Yeah. No, no, no. Beethoven. You know a lot about famous dogs. I mean, these are just low-hanging fruit. Yeah, no. I'm just, um, dog. <laughs> Reminder, you have 14 hours and 20 minutes to evacuate Earth. Please consult your municipality website for your zip codes to part your location. Reminder, you have 14 hours and 20 minutes to evacuate Earth. Please consult your municipality website for your zip codes to part your location. God, those are so annoying. Seriously. Like every 10 minutes. Are you kidding me? Right? It's not like I'm going to forget! Do you think they'll have Halloween on Mars? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, I think people are going to cling to all of our earthly conditions. <laughs> you know, my parents are inside packing. They think I'm insane for wanting to pass out candy tonight. Mine too. They're like, nobody in their right minds are going to let their kids go out trick-or-treating tonight. I, if I had kids, I would 1,000% take them trick-or-treating tonight. Absolutely. Need this stuff. Right? Like, it's still October 31st, it's still Halloween. And you know the kids that go trick or treating tonight? They're gonna be like, gods on the spaceships with all that candy! Oh, they're gonna totally be like, the overlords of the ships! <laughs> hey, um, wanna do a candy swap? Absolutely. Uh, be right back. You know, I, I think we'll probably be in the same cabin tomorrow, since our families are neighbors and stuff. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's not fun to hang out or anything, but it's nice to know that we could. Hey, we should watch Scream. Yeah? Yeah. That sounds really nice. Okay. Great. Great now? Oh, I thought you meant, like, let's watch Scream, like, tomorrow, like, on the spaceship. Do you not want to watch? No, I seriously really do want to watch. Okay, then, it's just that my family will literally kill me if I don't let them finish back. Oh. But tomorrow, oh. the second that we take off, I'm coming to find you, and we're watching. But what if the Wi-Fi is shitty? Or, like, there's a technological interference. <sighs> okay, but, and hear me out. 
I just think that if we watch it tomorrow, we can have something more to forward to. But we can't watch it tomorrow. Why not? Come on! Why not? Because I'm not going. Not going where? On ship. I'm confused. Do you have any more reasons? Uh, if you're not going on the ship, how are you getting to Mars? Staying here. Staying where? On Earth. You're making a joke? I'm staying on Earth. Nobody is staying on Earth. Well, I am. So, tonight is in fact your one and only chance to watch Scream with me. <laughs> Holy fuck. Here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy fuck. These are all full size? Yup. <laughs> Holy fuck. Feast your eyes. What the hell are you going to do on Earth? Ah, eat candy, I guess? You're going to die. Oh my gosh! What a pirate! Trick or treat indeed! Here you go! Take as much as you want! Yeah. Hey. Wanna see something cool? Please say no. He's no fun! Say yes. Jesus fucking Christ. Hobby, <laughs> hobby! <laughs> Let's go watch Scream! No, I can't watch Scream with you if you aren't going to Mars. <sighs> Why is that? Because if I watch Scream with you, then for the rest of my life, I have to think about that girl that I watch Scream with and then let die. Think of it as my make-a-wish. <laughs> that is a horrifying thing to say. Did you know that I had a huge crush on you when we were kids? You're changing the subject? You're not letting me die, James. But we'll never see each other again. <sighs> James? You're about to go live in an orb, and I'm about to either burn or freeze. Don't you want to live a little before either of those things happen? I think it would literally torment me forever. Oh, you'd be tormented either way. Nora, I have an entire life ahead of me to be tormented. You're going to die too, you know. Yeah, I mean, sure. Someday. Exactly. But I'm gonna die in like an abstract way, like in a who knows when. We definitely know. Like way in the future, when I'm older. Blah blah blah. And you are gonna die in a very literal way. I promise you, your death uh -huh. will also be. You know what I mean? <laughs> your spaceship could very easily blow up. Sure. But the chances of that happening are actually pretty small. And and the chances of the Earth destroying itself within the next year? are about a hundred percent. You could be eaten by an alien. That death by an alien murder is actually a very abstract death, you know, in my opinion. I don't think we've said this many words to each other since we were eight. If I come over and watch Scream with you, would you maybe, might, like, reconsider? That's a lot of pressure. And that eight-year-old Nora would love to go to space with him. Simmer down. Does she really have a crush on me? You were fully dreaming. <laughs> that was disgusting. <laughs> Not to me. My favorite trick was putting my fist in my mouth. You would also <laughs> put your socks in your mouth? Oh, God. I thought that was very <laughs> sexy. Uh, oh my gosh. You're blushing. <laughs> You're blushing. <laughs> you know, those alien chicks are just gonna be all over you up there. You wouldn't have time to watch movies with me anyway. It could be very exciting. Dating an alien. Mm -hmm. Very exciting A indeed. A real adventure. Yeah. Until she murders you. In an abstract way. Then you'd have to come to Mars. To avenge my death. Maybe I could do that for you. But, if you reconsider... What? If you reconsider and come before my murder, we could, like... What? Start it. Start what? <laughs> Halloween on Mars. Jeez, I don't want to reconsider. 
Aren't you scared? I'm not. It's okay to admit that you're scared. Why would you want me to do that? Because you're making a decision that goes against human nature. I'm not a robot. I know what I'm doing. And your family? They're just okay with this? I mean, they don't know that I'm staying. Oh, no. They're picking up my grandparents in Salem right now. They think I'm meeting them there. Don't you want to say goodbye to them? Who? Your family! James. I'm just... I'm trying to understand. If I told them, they would try and stop me. Yeah? I would hope so. They just wouldn't get it. But to be fair, it's kind of like a hard thing to get. First, they would think I was kidding. And then when they realized that I'm actually serious, they would just... Treat me like I'm some big fucking idiot for wanting And that sounds shitty. No, I'm not asking it for does. opinion. It does, and I am sorry to be so forward, but I just don't understand how you could just, like, not tell your family. Like, not even a note. I wouldn't have told you that I'm staying if I thought you were going to be late. You can't just drop this on me and expect me to be chill. I mean, uh, I can't just spend, like, a nine-month voyage on a space shuttle with your family, with the knowledge that I knew and I didn't stop you. James! Stop! Look. My family has just never been very interested in getting to know me, okay? I mean, I haven't lived at home full time since I was literally 14. And living there, it's like living in a hospital. Everything is so clean. I mean, they don't get mess. Like, fundamentally, don't understand it. And to them, I'm this big, colossal blob that they can't figure out how to clean up, so they would rather just not look. They wouldn't be the only ones on the spaceship. That's not my point. No, I hear you. My I'm point just... is that I don't want my last memory of my family to be just another day of them. Of them. Them looking the other way. Okay. Your family sucks. Mm -hmm. And let's say that they wouldn't get it. Which or you. Or they wouldn't and they don't. Maybe that's not a good enough reason to throw out your only opportunity to find people who might, like, I don't know, someday, maybe, get it? My family is not the reason that I'm staying. Why are you staying? Why are you going? Because everyone I love is going. Did you know that the Earth has already had five mass extinctions? But this time doesn't have to be an extinction. But maybe this is just part of the circle of life. But this is human cause. But maybe the natural lifespan of any species on Earth can only ever be a thousand couple of years, and humans fucked up extra bad. <laughs> what if this is like... Earth's filtration system. I'm confused. All I'm saying is that maybe we've met our time and that's okay. We, we messed up and we just have to accept that. If human error got us here, I want to believe that human ingenuity can get us out. And you're really okay to live the rest of your life confined no. to an or That's just not how I think of it. And I know you're going to make fun of me for this, I... but no, you will. <laughs> I kind of think of it as this testament to, like, love. Okay. Like, okay, um, remember when we were in the third grade? <coughs> and we had to do that bizarre old-timey day? And we couldn't use electricity or technology, and boys couldn't mingle with girls, and, and we had to churn butter? <laughs> and pick plants and herbs for lunch, and at first everyone was like, really pissed and grumpy? But then we realized, like, wait, rules are fake. Huh? Yes, because at first we thought the point that they were trying to teach us was like, be grateful for what you have. Shit used to suck. But then we realized the whole point that they were actually trying to teach us was like, everything everywhere is completely arbitrary and made up. And if we don't like it, then we can just change it. 
Because obviously at some point in history, someone looked around and was like, this shit sucks. <laughs> and now we have technology and electricity and automated water making processes. Now I'm <laughs> and so now said, fuck it, we staged that whole playground rebellion. It was like one of the best days of my life. Like all everyone wanted to do was like help each other out and make this shitty stuff not shitty. And the kids that thought I was weird thought I was cool because I could start fires from Boy Scouts. And the kids that ate worms, like, they suddenly had, like, all this worm eating cloud. And, and, I had my first kiss with Victoria Von Drusel. Okay, Brad. That's the point. Part of the point. No, <laughs> the point is. No. I, of course, I don't want to spend the rest of my life confined to an orb. I just, I don't think that it's place or time that make us human. I think it's our relationships to other people that make us human. And that is something that always transcends circumstance. Okay. Yes. Sure. Love is the sixth dimension. La, la, la. I get it. Human beings come together during hard times. Historically, yes. But still, all things have to end. And it feels like the Earth is giving us a pretty big sign right now that it's our time. That is so defeatist. No, no, it's not. It's acceptance. It's making peace. Nobody is asking you to do that. The Earth quite literally is. I think this is evolution. Humans evolve. That's what we do. Going to Mars isn't evolving. It's surviving. And barely. What's the difference? <laughs> you realize this is one of the last times you'll ever be outside? Mars also has outside. <laughs> yeah. And outside, you won't be able to breathe in without putting on hundreds of pounds of insulation technology. It's only a matter of time before you can't breathe throughout Earth either, Nora. You'll never smell rain, or grass, or campfire. Change is inevitable. At least out there we can shape the change instead of letting it kill us. No more hanging with friends. No more swimming in lakes. No more stargazing from your porch. No more deer crossings. No more snow days! A chance to start over. To leave all the bad things, maybe even to create a more free and bountiful- God, you sound like such a colonist. Excuse me? You know that's what this is, right? You're going to colonize another planet. A dead planet. There is plenty of evidence that there was, or is, or could be some kind oh, of life on- Bacteria? You were once bacteria. <laughs> I guess I just didn't think it was possible to, like, colonize single-cell organisms. Single cell organisms that might someday want a planet that humans haven't completely annihilated? So you're using a theoretical argument to justify your death? To justify all of our deaths, yes. But not everyone is dying. That's the thing, there's a choice. There is. Your argument is also theoretical, you know. We are not going to annihilate the planet. We annihilated this one! I'm going because it's in my value system to try. But at what cost? I really think that we can make things better. Tell me what your life will look like. I am. Not in theory, in practice. Everyday life. What does it look like? I don't know. Use your imagination. I don't know. And that's exciting. Being trapped in an eternal dust storm is exciting to you? More exciting than spending the rest of my life alone, here. Other people are staying too, you know. People you know personally? Not yet. Aren't you just a little bit curious? About Mars? Yes. Not really. I don't believe that. I've used my imagination. You don't have to be such a martyr. 
I'm not being a martyr. Yes, you are. We want different things, and that's okay. Why are you so averse to having hope? I fully understand what I risk by staying. Well, so you are scared. It's more nuanced than that. Yo, why do you keep talking about it like it's such an easy decision? Why are you being such a dick right now? I am now? just trying to help. Of course I'm terrified. Of course I am. And I was actually doing a really awesome job of ignoring that feeling until you came along. Then come to Mars. I don't want to. Why not? Because I would be miserable. Wishing I was somewhere else while I try to be who you, or my parents, or whoever else wants me to be. Then stop you. pushing me! There is still so much time. Ask me what my life will look like. What? I asked you. Are you asking me? About my everyday life. Okay. What will your life look like? Well, tomorrow, I think I'll wake up, make some coffee, sit on the porch with a book, and then I'll go check on all the neighbor's plants, because they're in my care now. All of them. <laughs> and then I think I'll go for a walk in the woods. Barefoot. Because I haven't been barefoot in the woods since I was a kid. Then maybe I'll go for a swim. Or maybe I'll drive to the ocean. And at night, every night, I'll lie on the ground or the roof of my car or my porch and I'll stare at the sky, the stars. And maybe even some nights I'll fall asleep there. And that won't make me feel afraid. And maybe I'll go looking for others who stay. Or maybe they'll find me. Maybe I'll never see another person again in my life. But every day, I'll wake up and I'll ask myself, what feels good today? And whatever happens to feel good that day won't be in conflict with myself or with other people or the earth. What I want will just be. Both choices are bad, James. Staying, leaving, they both suck. And yes, I know my time here will be short, but I'll spend that time eating blackberries and listening to the birds sing, and maybe that's cheesy and dumb. But for once, for the first time, I'll know that I made a decision that will really let me live on my own terms the way I want to. And all I need from you, James, is to not make me feel like absolute shit for trying to spend the rest of my life feeling actually alive. Reminder, you have 14 hours and 10 minutes to evacuate Earth. Please consult your municipality website for your zip code's departure location. Reminder, you have 14 hours and 10 minutes to evacuate Earth. Please consult your municipality website for your zip code's departure location. Okay. You're staying. I'm staying. That's okay. Yes. I I shouldn't have pushed you. I shouldn't have asked you to watch the screen. I don't want to fuck up your life. I don't want to fuck up yours either. I just. I think I'm having an existential crisis. <laughs> Me too.
Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Okay. Okay. If Earth somehow survives, and I can come back, I will find it. Jeez. You still have to watch Scream. Right? Ouch. Ouch. I should go inside. Start. Me too. I promise not to hate you for your choice. You promise not to hate me for mine. I promise. Good night, Lord. Safe travels, James. You have 14 hours and zero minutes to evacuate Earth. Please consult your municipality website for your zip codes to find your location. Reminder, you have 14 hours and zero minutes to evacuate Earth. Please consult your municipality website. <laughs>
Okay. So at six years old, you were defending a certain theory? People do crazy things when the woman they're sleeping with is that hot, and sometimes hot women can be a little eccentric. She didn't wear weird hats, Marsha. She was a flat earther. As for you, I'm just saying, oh I forgive your doubts about my love life, just as I forgive your doubts about the basic tenets of science. No, it's, well, no. it's when you say things like love life that I really start to worry. It just makes it sound so tangible, like you can point to a picture of the two of you. Love is intangible. Only relationships aren't. Any relationship. I have a relationship with my mailman. You can tell because he, I have the Christmas wreath he gave me last year, and he has what I assume to be permanent scarring on his legs from Chester's persistent jumps. Real things we can both point to and say, I've seen this person in the last 10 years. Can't always see what people mean to each other. I, I wish it wouldn't make me be this mean to you. I just wanted to get drunk and dance to good Charlotte. Uh, you know I love you, right? Can your powers detect the fervor with which my lesbian heart beats for you with the most platonic adoration? It's amazing how quickly you devolve into sounding like you're reading from a grad student's paper written the night before with just one drink. No, I've had more than one drink. I know you love me. Mm -hmm. It was just your lead into saying something biting, though. Not biting! Potentially painful, but delivered with love. Billy E. We are sitting here in the year of our Lord, 2018. You haven't been separated by war, or famine, or one of those weird sci-fi occurrences where everyone's cell suddenly dies and they don't know why. <laughs> if she wanted to reach out to you, there were literally dozens of avenues for her to take. Why the hell would she wait for her high school reunion instead of just messaging you? Because we promised we were endgame. But I didn't want to get in the way of our acting dreams that it made more sense for us to tackle our 20s alone. Oh, you told me the story. But we believed both of us so strongly that our fate was to be together forever, and that 10 years in a lifetime would be nothing. It was, it was a sweet promise to make at 18. But we'd come back to our tender union, and when we lock our eyes across the crowded gym, we'd see each other. And it would be like no time had passed at all. And we'd take each other by the hand and, and tell each other everything a whole life of, of friendships. Life and work. If you could hear each other over the sound of truly blaring Baby Mary. Without oh. saying a word, I take her by the hand and lead her to the band room where we rediscover each other's bodies, making love under the two of us, just like <laughs> oh we did God. on graduation night. Good. And at the moment, climax. I'm like two seconds away from going in search of the girls who bullied me and offering to do shots just to get out of this conversation. Oh my God. Oh. Into each other's <laughs> eyes, and those last ten years will disappear. And we'll be where we started. Back where we belong. Hello, Billy. Huh? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you're cute. You're cute. You, you, you're beautiful. <laughs> well, um, you've got to put in the effort to convince yourself and all your former classmates you're still 18, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I knew in this moment you're like, no time to pass at all. Oh, my God. Well, wouldn't that be nice? So, uh, what have you been up to? Waiting for you. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, 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 I, I don't need tonight. Neither does he. <laughs> oh my god. Marsha? Oh my god. Oh, god. How are you? Oh, well, at the moment. Well, she's, um, she's, she's good, but she's leaving. I am. Yeah. I know I asked you because I am. I appreciate it, but you got better things to do. Uh, are you guys together? Oh, uh, lesbian. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just always assumed. Yeah, fish together. <laughs> really? Yeah. You don't remember the daily hate crimes Megan Company committed against me? A lot of nicknames involving my love for bikes, mics, hikes. I just, I, I, just, I don't know. You, you, kids can be cool no. and accurate. Well, how, how could we possibly be together? Well, I, I didn't know she how, could, how could we be together when we're together? Oh my god. What? But. No. I'm gonna go ahead and go. <laughs> Billy, I'll be over by the punch uh, if you need me. When you need me. Huh? I 
I'm here with my husband. Oh. Uh, That's impossible. <laughs> really? You can't have a husband. I haven't heard from you in ten years. Okay, that's what we that's what we agreed to. That's what we promised. Because we were eighteen. Because we spent so many years, you know, waiting for our lives to start, we, we thought we could hit pause. But but at some point, you must have realized that that's not how life works. At some point, you must have grown up. I, I bought us a house. Oh, okay. what? You don't buy a house for two people alone, Bill. That's not a decision for you to make for someone else. I didn't make it with you. We talked about getting a house. You were teenagers, Bill. I always talked about getting a tongue ring, too. But I would have sued you. I should find my house. No, wait, wait, wait. wait. That, that was a lot. That was a lot at once. Um. Well, it would have been a lot spread out, too, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> It's a joke. A joke? Yeah. You know, you may watch The Notebook a million times during your year and remember Ryan Gosling buys her a house to surprise her with, and you thought it was so romantic, so oh. I thought I'd see how romantic you think it is in real life. So, so less of a joke and more of a test? So you. You didn't buy us a house. No, of course not. You know, that would be unhinged, which I am not. Well, okay. You know, you always did have a strange sense of humor. Oh. You used to like that. I heard that you remember my, uh, my senior prank in your honor, actually, for <laughs> your honor. Oh. Of course, I remember. Oh, Mr. Michelson, he had it out for me the whole year, and I never cheated. Like, I can't believe you got his car on the roof. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I can do anything for you. Oh. You were a great first boyfriend. Do you remember what we said ten years ago about their union? Not having sex with you. It's not about the sex. I think it would be about the sex for my husband. It could sound like some guy in the street looking to get his rocks off. Get your rocks off? Why, why are you talking like a 100 year old man? <laughs> Time and space and my whole fucking sense of self is just exploded. Okay, I feel like I should be apologizing. You can break promises often too. I did make that promise. I'm a high school senior who didn't know anything you did. Probably enough in this universe, you're still responsible for the promises of your past selves. Those all promises would be pretty meaningless. Well, maybe they are. Because they're, they're never made with all the information we'll have in the future. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Did you promise to love your husband until you die? Yes. Do you tend to go to him in the future and tell him that you shouldn't be held to the promises of 27-year-old Vicky now that 42-year-old Vicky is so much older and wiser? That's why we have a prenup. Huh? You have a prenup? Of course. You have to protect yourself. From someone you love? People, people can change, though. I don't even know you anymore. That's what I've been trying to tell you. What did you know you? Probably better than you know yourself. I know deep down you know you're fake. 
a state. <laughs> that wasn't your way of protecting yourself from him. That was your way of saving yourself from me. Oh my God. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? Sorry for the pain you've inflicted. I guess sometimes you see remorse in court rooms. Um, or are you going to sue me, you know? <laughs> no, I'm not going to sue you. I don't look like I did on graduation night. Because that's when you still admit that you love me. I Yes, you do. I have a husband. And on your wedding day, you have a soulmate. Oh my God. I, I should go. No, no, don't, don't. Um, did you see the courtyard? Yeah, I did. Great memorial trees from our one year long. I, I want to see the beauty in it, the regrowth. Something good coming out of tragedy. All I see is a graveyard. Do you think they might be lucky in a way? Come on. So you think they were lucky for getting in a fatal car crash and dying at 16? No, I don't. They'll never be disappointed with the way things turned out. Well, they'll never anything. They're dead. Sometimes that can be better. I I know you don't believe me, but I am sorry. And I can be someone to talk to if you need to talk. We can be friends. I'm not there yet. Okay. I'm not ready to say we're not in game either. Bill. If, if I get there, I'll call you, okay, and I'll, I promise not to wait another 10 minutes. I'll look forward to it. So, how's the heart to heart going? <laughs> um, it, it was really great catching up. Nice to see you tomorrow, Jen. Take care of yourself. Okay, Bill? Yeah, yeah. Shit, man. Um, I'm sorry. I know I was giving you a hard time earlier, but I know this must be really hard. I'll be fine. Um, what's your name? Oh, absolutely wild. You remember Gail? We were in drama with her freshman year. It turns out she had a crush on me. All four years of high school, just got out of a relationship and came here tonight just to shoot her shot and shot received and shot back because she is a hot vet and we're gonna go get drinks tomorrow night and we're gonna play with her puppy. <laughs> got a wrong comment in Hey, if the universe is giving me that, I'm sure you're on its list too. Mm -hmm. Sure, I trust the wisdom of the universe anymore. That's probably helpful too. Come on. I bribe the DJ, and we're all gonna go do the soldier boy. You go ahead, Paul. Good job.
doing so lost. I gave my whole heart to someone I thought was worthy, and she crushed under her foot. What the fuck can I do now? What the hell is this? Rabbit food? It's not rabbit food. It's I'd rather die than eat this crap. Spinach, and you will die if you don't. The doctor said. You're lucky we got the last bag. I don't get this. What? Food store, no food. I mean, it is the end of the world. Huh? <laughs> Live in the global economy, something. Well, they shouldn't call it a food store if it's got no food. They should just call it a store. What do you think, Rachel? They should just call it a store. Funny. Jesus, look at all these people running, pushing, shoving. <laughs> Somebody should tell them that this won't last all this, that it is normal. Boom and bust. I have seen it all before. You said it. I'm telling you, I've been through this all once over and then some. <laughs> is that come here? Oh, don't worry, it's not that. Oh, yeah, we don't have to. I haven't had it since 2008. You know, at first they gave me six months. I thought it was a year. No, nah, six months. Maybe even five months they gave me. Funny how it gets lower every time you tell it. Mm, and yeah, here I am. You can't get rid of me that easy. <laughs> Sit down, go on, I'll pay up. <coughs> Alright, that's 175 Hmm? $175? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's not right. It can't be. You must have made a mistake, put something in twice or something. I mean, look at that. How can that possibly be that much? Um, I mean, you can check the receipt. Yes, I will. Thanks. How's your day going today? What? How's your... Never mind. Everything on um, checking out okay? I mean, yes, it's right. It's just... I'm sorry, it's just it doesn't make sense. Because I get... I get pretty much the same thing every week, so I don't understand how it could be so much more than probably the... something to do with the economy, inflation, supply chain. Yes, I understand that, that, but something like that. Yeah, I get that, but this this is insane. I can't. Maybe you have a card or something you can put it on? I have a job and I can't afford food. Is no, it... I don't. You don't have a card? I mean I can't use it. I'm up to my limits for next month. Maybe you can extend. Like the limit of my backup limit, so that's really not an option. Um, Jesus, let me let me see what I can do. Um, well, maybe I could take some things off, but that won't be enough for the week. For the both of us, my dad's sick. You see, he needs spend less on avocados, maybe. Huh? <laughs> it's a joke, you know. Like stop eating avocado toast. What? But I don't have avocados here. No, I know. <laughs> I have only got basics here. Essential spinach soap, pasta. It's just like something old people say. But I don't have avocados. I know, I was just like trying to satirize. Oh I haven't even got any snacks. I've been trying to cut back on everything. I don't need haircuts, coffee, clothes. I haven't done anything nice for myself for ages. I'm basically just, I mean, I'm just surviving. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So, so what do I, I mean, what do I, um, so I just work here really? I oh my gosh. Like, not eat? Like, tell my sick daddy can't eat? I mean, what do you expect me to, want me to? What's going on? Nothing, dad, everything. What's the hold up? I don't know, I mean, I have to call my manager. Fine, yes. Can somebody yes. tell me what's going on? Nothing's going on, dad, everything's fine, everything's fine. I'm just, a, it's just, it's just a bit more normal. All right, then if it's a bit more, put it on the card. I mean, like a lot more. A lot, a little, who cares? Let's put it on the card now, and then we pay it back whenever we need it. What? Pay it back with a what? Did you like check out five? All right, okay, don't stress. Let me look, maybe I got a little bit extra. Right? What's up? Here. Hello, pleased to meet you. I'm the manager. How can I help? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, 
Nick, uh, just because uh, I do the same shop more or less every week, and uh, I mean, it's shot up. Okay, so what would you like me to? Like it's unaffordable. Like we can't afford to um eat. So I don't know if there's something you could do or. So I don't really have a lot of control over the price of goods. No. No, unfortunately not. Why not? Um, I'm not trying to be stupid. I mean, this is your. You own this store, yeah, right? I, I mean, I franchise it. You from... franchise it from someone, but you own it ultimately, right? Well, so. The... Yes, but see, prices have gone up all over. But you could lower them if you wanted by, by charging less. Well, see, they will go down on their own eventually. The prices, it's the, the mechanism of capitalism, right? It's, it's like, how do I explain this? Supply and demand. Because of a lot of factors, really. COVID, crop conditions, reduced export availability. So there's less of a supply of food and more of a demand for it. So prices rise. Right, so I don't need But to... when fewer people buy food because it's so expensive, the supply will rise relative to the demand. A lecture on economics. The prices will fall. It's kind of neat when you think about it. Neat? <laughs> I mean, from a theoretical. All right, this is all I got on Here you go. Great. Eight dollars. Great, thanks, Dad. Well, if that's everything. No, wait. But who's not going to buy food? What was that? Who's this? Who? <laughs> <laughs> you said fewer people will buy food because it's more expensive. But people need food to live because people die without food, right? Yes, I believe that's right. <laughs> you believe that, so how does that work in this? This mechanism. Hey, Rich, why don't you call your boss? What, Dad? You were going to ask for a raise, right, for all that overtime you've been putting in. So why don't you just call right now and ask? Call my boss. <laughs> yes! Call my boss from my phone on a Sunday asking for a raise. <laughs> in what version of the world does it work like that? In mine. As an employer, I would certainly find that unusual. It would be weird. Uh, show initiative. You never know. <laughs> I'm not even my boss is that. What do you mean you're not sure? Because there's been restructuring. Forget about it. What does that mean, restructure? It means like pre order I know what the word <laughs> restructuring means. I want to know what it means for my door. What do you think it means, Dad? Something good? Oh, okay, all right. It's all right. You can find another one. Another what? What are you find talking about? Another job. Pick up some extra shifts somewhere. Let's say, what's his name? Nick. Hey. <laughs> oh my gosh. Buddy. I don't suppose you have any, um, uh, Dad. anything she could help out with around here or... Uh, no, not at the moment, unfortunately, but you can certainly drop off a copy of your resume and we'll consider it. Ah, uh, because she's smart. She went to a good school. That's great. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> I should know I had to pay for it. I had to remortgage the house to put it through. You see, that was my, my, Dad. my contribution, you know, because, see... My mom died when she was very young, so it's always just been me and her. She had to grow up really fast, you see, and I was out a lot. I worked, see, and, and that was my... Dad, Nick doesn't need to know our life history. Put her food on the table, making sure she had everything she needed, everything she wanted, that she was provided for, you know? That was my responsibility. What a thing. I appreciate all that, sir. I do. It's just like I said. Production costs. Because you just want the best of them, don't you? What's that? You kids! You just want the best of them, don't you? Uh, yeah, I guess. Don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so how many do you have then? What's that? Kids! How many do you have? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I don't have kids. I can't afford them. <laughs> production costs. What's that? You said that this this is all because of production costs. That's what you're yes, saying. Yes, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> Rich, you got a copy of your resume on you? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can go home, print a copy of your resume off, come back, and maybe, just maybe he'll let you take some of this in exchange for it. Stop! Dad! You're right. This has a lot anything to do with production costs. Because look, it's all over the papers, how everything's getting mechanized. Um. Automated! Look, see? How machines are doing things more efficiently for lower cost so well, they're putting people out of work. No, well, that, that's not... So, what? I don't understand. This production costs argument, 
if it costs next to nothing to produce, if a machine can still pick, process food, if no human labor is involved at all? So, well, what am I paying for exactly? Um. And what about when there's the ideal machine that costs nothing to maintain and works forever? What happens to prices then? when producing anything will be as cheap and as easy as copy and pasting text. Would they get a machine to replace her, even? Because, well, you might as well, because what exactly is she adding to the checkout experience? I appreciate that you're frustrated. Her jokes! Oh my god. What have I told you about joking with the customers? You were upset. I was just trying to... What's going to happen when even you're out of a job, Nick? Have you thought about that? No, I bet you haven't. When there are no workers to exploit, no one to blame, no one to buy the products that cost nothing to produce because no one's got a job because a machine can do it better? Have you thought that far ahead? Well, I'm asking you to. I'm asking you to fast forward and have a bit of vision and imagination. Nick, please, because we are desperate! Maybe if you got something going, anything, sweeping floors, even I oh, could. Yeah, to be. I, look, I'm not in the best shape right now, but I will work. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. I'm a worker. I will work. Don't and, uh, be ridiculous, Dad. <laughs> look, I just need someone to admit to me that something is that the system is not working. Okay. I appreciate that you're distressed, but my hands are tied. They're physically tied, are they? Stop, 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 stop. You know what? I'll sort this. Daddy will sort this. All right? The bench. Dad. No, no, it's all right. I mean, what is it there for? It's there for you. I can't take it with me. Dad, don't. Ah, just release a little bit. Dad. Just to tie this over. Now, where's this slip of paper? Ah, Dad. The password. Dad, don't. Should I un unpack this? Oh my god. Come get it. There's this voice saying that the account no longer exists. I mean, what the. It folded. What does that mean, it folded? I believe that means it's. Oh my Gone. Gone? This is my pension, my savings. That's everything we have in that account we're talking about here. What do you mean it's gone? Gone where? I don't know. The company folded. It took the pensions with it. There's nothing left. But you've been using it. I thought you've been taking some out for my treatment. Haven't you? Then how? Savings. That's not... And loans. Enough. Loans, mostly. I'm maxed out, basically. On loans. Right. I'm bloated with loans. <laughs> so you lied to me. No. Well, yes, technically. But they told me not to stress you out about my own daughter lying to me. I think maybe this is shifted to more of a personal matter. Okay. You're not going anywhere. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. This can't be right. This cannot be right. I'm gonna. No, 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 no. Where's, where's, Dad. Hey, no, no. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this, honey. Don't worry. This, this, this. Ah! <laughs> That was everything. That was my earth because I worked. It's fine, Dad. Uh, maybe we can put something back or... I worked and worked and worked every moment of every god or second day. I worked because I wanted... It was for you. Do you understand? Dad, can you calm down, please? Everyone's looking. It was all for you. Every damn minute was for you, and they've taken it! Can I give him a bottle of water? Who's gonna pay for that? These fucking animals! They've taken my life and scrunched it up like a routine for a fucking soda and lost it. My life! My life! These goddamn bastards! Dad! Dad, what are you- Are you- Hey! Dad! Are you planning to pay for that? Dad! What? Dad! <laughs>
Um, hello? How is he? Sorry, do I know you? Yeah, it's um, from the store. Okay. I'm Erica. I was at the checkout when- Oh. Oh, okay, sorry. I heard he was still in, so I brought- Oh, wow. Thanks, that's really nice of you. How is he? Wow. Um, not good. Oh, that sucks. Um, are you uh, okay? What was that? Are you okay? Um, <laughs> no, not really. Like, like, I don't know what the future looks like anymore. Like, it's just gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> the worst part is, I can't stop thinking about how much all of this is going to cost. Isn't that awful? I mean, my dad's in there, dying, basically, and all I can think of is how on earth I'm going to be able to pay for that sound because I am in so much debt. So much debt, I'm swimming in it. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I don't know why I'm talking about this. I'm sure it'll be okay. I'm sure it'll work itself out with the money stuff. I mean, it always does, right? <laughs> How old are you? Oh. Hey. Oh. Hi. Hello? What are you... I just wanted to see if he was okay. Huh? Her, the guy who collapsed by the... Her dad? No. I don't... The bag of spinach we had to toss? Oh! Oh, yeah, you're the... Okay. Isn't that why you're... Uh, no. No, no, I have some side work. You it's have a second job. Side work as a hospital administrator. You want to pay the rent somehow, right? Oh Hi there. I'm so sorry for your loss. <laughs> I'm sorry, wrong form. So my dad's... No, he's fine. He's fine. I, I mean, not fine, exactly. But, um, no change. So, if you could just sign... Here, here, and here. Okay. If you could just indicate here exactly how you'd like to pay. Does she have to do that now? What else is she going to do? It's just she's um, upset about her dad. Look. So? Take your time. It's okay. Great. <clears throat> How are things at the store? Calm down? Yeah, a bit. Don't you work at the store? Uh, nope, I was fired. Fired? Why? Ask him. You <coughs> fired her? I... It was after you said that thing about the self-checkout machines. He sat down, did the math. You did what? Well, when you actually sit down and do the math, it just makes so much more sense. Oh god, oh god, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Hey, no, it's fine. I mean... It's an upfront cost, but... No, I... I'm so sorry. I didn't know what I was saying. I was so angry. Oh, oh you shouldn't have... It's okay, really. I got them from my friend. You're good. You know, if you need a standby shift or something just to tide you over... Until... It's fine, actually. You know, it's actually working out. See, I knew you had something else lined up. I knew it. Oh, no. What, what do you mean? What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> what, what do you mean, nothing? I mean, I'm not doing anything. Yeah, not, you must at least be looking for... No. I guess her family has money. No, I think I'm just free? I don't know. Huh? Uh, <laughs> what? It's like, I've got all this time now, you know? And it's actually kind of nice having time, because if there's anything I need to know, I can just look it up. It's cool. I mean, there's all this knowledge, like, it's like, away, right? I don't understand. Do you understand? Like, everything I ever need to know, I can learn. Like, how to cook, clean, exercise, plant, meditate, grow. And I found these, like, networks online where I can swap stuff, borrow, and exchange most of what I need. Like, Wikipedia, open source software, time banks, all this stuff that's already out there now. And it's like, I don't know, it's like I don't really need money, really. Yeah, but you can't live like that forever. <laughs> Why not? Because it's not realistic, is it? Why not? Let's <laughs> get me out here. I, I don't know, oh, it sounds nice. I mean, think about it. We live in a world where people can be whoever they want to be. Uh, for how much longer? Everyone has access to some kind of voice where we can communicate and coordinate and organize even as easily as waking up where we have 
holidays and medicine and people are free. Not all people are. Where more people are freer than they've ever been at any point in human history. So like, why is it so hard to imagine economic freedom, like not working or needing to work and just being happy like that? Like just living, you know? Living. Living. Yeah. It's like, it's like there's an end coming. There's obviously an end coming. I just, I don't think it's going to be as bad as everyone thinks, you know? 